Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 9, and I'm very excited today to talk to you about the M13 Event Decks, where the Coast has just released two new Event Decks. Event Decks, if you're not familiar with them already, are basically tournament playable decks that take cards that are currently in standard in the current standard environment and give you a out-of-the-box deck that is playable at a Friday Night Magic event and with a little bit of customization are also extremely competitive decks. In this case, Wizards has done a great job with one of the event decks and really missed the mark on the other. Let's look at the good deck first. The good deck, or in this case I would actually say great, and one of the best event decks they have ever put together, is the Repeat Performance deck. The cards in this deck add up to about $30, which is pretty impressive for a $20 retail price. It has some staple cards in it, such as Green Sun Zenith, which is seeing a lot of play right now in Legacy and a good amount of play in Standard. It has what is the best rare, if not the best overall card from M13 in Throg Tusk in here as a main card. This card was hovering around $15 or so by itself before the event deck was announced, and even now is probably a $12 or $13 card in and of itself. It also has several other playable cards. Let's take a look at those. The Sunburst Angel is a favorite in EDH, and I love that they're putting a strong EDH card in these decks. Blade Splicer, even though he's about to rotate out, is a great card that is seeing a lot of play in Standard currently. Green Sun Zenith is so strong that it was banned in Modern, but still sees a huge amount of play in EDH and a lot of play in Standard. The Razor Verge Thickets are an incredible incredibly good Scars dual land that are seeing play in both Standard and in Modern. And Thrug Tusk, as I mentioned, is almost worth the value of the deck alone. The only real negative or downside to this deck is that a lot of the cards are going to be cycling out of Standard rather quickly with the return to Ravnica. Would have liked to have seen a little bit more focus on the newer cards and a little bit less focus on cards that would be rotating out soon. But overall, this is a strong deck with a strong theme to it. The value of the cards is well worth it, and I strongly recommend picking this deck up as soon as possible. The deck that has missed the mark is the Sweet Revenge deck. I'm not sure what exactly was going on here, but they're trying to do a three-color burn deck, splashing in some Evolving Wilds and a Dark Slick Shores to allow people to flash things back. I actually really like the theme of this deck, and it could have been done extremely well, but they really missed the mark on putting in valuable cards. The Dark Slick Shores a few months ago was running about $20 a piece, but they're down to about 6 at this point, and that had to be somewhat predicted with cards rotating out of the environment. They also really missed the opportunity to put in some higher end cards from some of the newer sets in here. The mana base on this is just a little bit on the tough side. Running three colors with very few lands in this event deck is difficult. Uh, playing through some sample hands of it on tapped out, the deck does not play as well as I would really like it to. It does have that base to build into it, a uh, much stronger deck, although I would be taking out a lot of the cards that are in here if I was going to turn this into a strong tournament competitive deck. Given the low amount of creatures in this deck, I, I would have even considered something like a Black Sun Zenith in here so that you have a little bit more creature board control. I'm just worried that this deck is going to get run over. The reason that it's really got the low rating is the value of the cards don't seem to be worth it, and I'm questionable about the playability of this event deck. Hopefully I'll have some friends pick it up so that I can play against it a few times with the green-white deck, which I'm definitely picking up, and be able to gauge their competitiveness a little bit better playing them head-to-head. -head. But I'm really disappointed. The opportunity, though, could have really been seized by adding one of these two suites to the deck. If they had added a Snapcaster and four Delvers, which seems like naturals in this in this deck, it would have upped the value of the deck and made it extremely tournament competitive from the out. 
set, the value of the deck would have tripled at that point, getting it up near or slightly above the retail value, which is where you really want to be with these decks, and it would have given it a lot of really good early pressure. It does seem like they tried to design the deck to beat Delvers specifically with some of the board wipes and the low creature count that's there, but I, I don't think they really did a good job with that. Although the strategy that I would have rather seen in here would be a Sky Summoner and then some of the M13 cards that really support that. The deck is super heavy on instants and sorceries, and having a way to increase those instants and sorceries power is the best thing that, uh, that this deck could have done. They have made one of these decks incredible, and they just missed the opportunity to really improve or give us a powerful deck in the second one. Hopefully I don't eat my words after a little bit of playtesting of these decks this weekend, as they are coming out today, but the green-white deck looks incredible, and this Grixis colored deck needs some work, both in the value and in the playability. Thanks, this has been Brian Rowe with an M13 event deck review. I recommend heading out there and picking up the green-white event deck. And please give me any feedback or comments. Uh, let me know if I hit the mark or missed it with regards to this review. Thanks.